hey everyone, Cynix here, and it is time to go back to the distant year of 2019. Uh, those were some good times, some bad times, some interesting times. Now, this video probably should have come out a couple weeks ago, but there was one big hiccup there that kind of messed things up. And yeah, I'll just mention it now. I was gonna mention it later, but I'll just mention it now. So as many of you know, I kind of switched over to using Procreate as my main art program. And it's great. I love Procreate. It's been a lot of fun. Unfortunately, uh, sometime around the start of this year, uh, there was an iPad update. Normally that's fine. Uh, it required a passcode. But I, I had no idea. I don't remember setting passcode. It was a big hassle. I tried many things to get some way to get access back into the iPad. And after many days and trying different things, eventually I just had to say, you know what? I give up. I can't, I can't get back into my iPad. And I had to reset the whole thing back to factory settings, which means I lost literally all of my 2019 artwork, at least the original files. Now, I did upload a bunch of them to my computer back in like May or whenever I made my Procreate video. So everything from about May till December is just gone on the iPad. And I'm pretty bummed about that. I was pretty upset for a little bit, especially that first day. But I learned to accept it and move forward because every art piece is just a stepping stone and your best work is always ahead of you. Now, personally, I do like to have my old stuff just to look back on uh, for memory's sake and just to kind of have that archive. I like archiving stuff, but it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. I did lose some fun stuff that I kind of liked a lot. But at the end of the day, you got to just accept whatever comes your way and just move on with a smile and find some motivating factor out of all of it. Anyway, I do have some stuff. I did do stuff in Corel Painter. It's not all iPad stuff. So I got stuff to share and I'll share some other fun stuff out to make up for it. And it'll still be a fun video. So let's just dive into it. Starting right off the bat, I think this one was done on the first day of 2019. Um, I was doing a lot of potato monsters at the time. That just means I'm smearing around stuff in Corel Painter, trying to make blobs and then build form out of the blobs. I was doing that a lot just for fun. Uh, I still do it a lot for fun. It's a good way to make creatures. Kind of looks like a little king gangster guy. I don't know what he is. Looks like he's drooling actually. Let's let's move on. We got a ton of stuff to go through. I almost forgot this one. I think that's the best part of these is I completely forget about stuff. If you don't know, it's fun to go on Map Crunch and look up a random location and just do some practice painting stuff because you'll usually get some different colors that you don't normally get. So this one was in Canada and I saw a couple, I think they were cows on a hill. Uh, so I decided to make a theme park in the background. It's a uh, Cownada, cow, cow Nada, and there's a cow theme park. It's, and uh, yeah, that's another great exercise. Not only is it a good thing to just do some quick map crunch, random environment, plain airing, but you can also, if you're feeling up to it, try adding stuff into it. This will test your knowledge of how colors work in different environments. And also it's really good for practicing painting stuff uh, at different distances. Fun times. Anyway, let's move on for out of Canada. Uh, this is more just stream stuff. A little skeleton boy. Just quick sketch warm up stuff. Because this is typical sketch warm up stuff. A lot of weird faces and just nonsense. It's usually when you're the most creative and explorative, right? When you're doing your warm up. Um, oh, yeah, this is, this is weird stuff. It's got some little creature designs here based on a skull study. Uh, I wish I could remember the skull. Maybe an antelope? I don't know. Someone in the comments will probably know what type of skull that is. Uh, but it's fun to do skull studies just as a general thing. But what's more fun is to take those skull studies and turn them into creatures. Let's move it along. Uh, more stream stuff. I don't know. This guy it looks like some weird Batman looking guy and some skull jester guy trying to tempt him with something. I Yeah, it's kind of fun. 
I think that turned into a little bit of a painting. It tur it stopped being Batman and turned into a bearded man because someone wanted a demo on skin tones. Uh, but yeah, that pickle in the background certainly looks menacing. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, more potatoy blob studies. Form, grayscale, always good to practice. Yet another one. I like this guy though. He looks very charming, friendly. I just imagine him being kind of tiny, like the little sidekick character. He's like a little squire maybe in a fantasy thing. Uh, he's got, he's kind of got a cute little face. Kind of, kind of a cute little innocent boy. Now this, I liked a lot. This was just a quick, once again, everything's kind of a quick warm up face painting study. Um, but yeah, definitely in 2018, the theme was to really focus on big, chunky, angular shapes when I was doing paintings, especially on skin tones. Uh, so you can see at this time, I feel like I was pretty much in a good zone for that. I really like keeping all of the shapes that I'm painting um, very obtuse, very open, just getting some nice, big, chunky shapes. Aside from a couple lines here and there, we're trying to avoid lines. Yeah, we don't want these lines, a couple lines here and there. If you, if you have to rely on lines, it's always a bad sign, but you can maybe have a couple for your eyes and whatever if you want to create that density. But for the most part, doing stuff, I'm sorry for my mouse clicks, by the way, doing stuff and trying to incorporate a little bit of just leaving those shapes open, leave the shapes visible, um, and it makes things very fun. I like how just having shapes be visible in the skin tones and also getting a lot of hue variation. You can see on the warmer skin tones, there's usually a hint of bluish underpainting um, just a little bit, maybe some grayish tones because that creates bluish. Uh, but on this one, bluish skin tone, you have a hint of that pinkish, warmish undertone. So all of that stuff goes into making things look more fun, more exciting. Once again, big, chunky brush strokes, follow those forms, get those planes working, it makes it more fun. This one's a little dull, but the rest of them, yeah, they're kind of fun. That's kind of the right mood I want to be in when I'm painting for just quick painting faces from imagination. Yeah, it's a good time, right? Yeah. Uh, this was also around the time when uh, Med Aldori did his 50 heads. I believe it was 50 heads at the start of the year. He did 100 heads later. I believe it was 50 heads during the start of the year. Anyway, I did do that one. Uh, and I decided that with this quick test, oh yes, this can work. So I went through forward and made a bunch more um, just using three. It, it gets tricky at times when you're limiting yourself to just three colors. Uh, Cause there's, there's, there's times where you're like, okay, I have background, skin tone and hair, gotta have those. That leaves me very little to actually add to the face. Um, but a lot of times you can make it work. I like this one that came out nice. Uh, yeah, a lot of these, the more I did them, even this one, it's very simplistic. I like it. This one, especially, uh, the reason I'm a fan of this one is both the earrings are using a different tone. It works, you know, one is shadow, this is the background color. And anytime you can just bring, if you were to look at this in an abstract way, you know, just bring this tone in, it looks like they're two separate things, but you use a little bit of that old gestalt and look at that, it turns into a face. So that's a good time. Enjoy that stuff a lot. I know I'm gonna try to keep my mouse quiet, but I can't, it's so noisy. Gotta get like a silent mouse. Uh, so after doing those, that was like the first experiment, I decided to use some other just fun stuff for the meds 50 heads. Uh, these ones were more painterly, of course. Once again though, I was really in the zone. Big chunky, big chunks of color, look at that. Just chunky. Good hue variety. I was pretty happy with those. These are, of course, studies though, uh, doing the Meds 50 heads. These are no longer from imagination uh, like these these over here. Uh, these are from studies, which is why I can get a little more um, creative with how I'm actually filling them out, get a little more uh, fancy with the colors, um, and uh, just have a little bit more fun with them. All right, I'm clicking way too much. I'm gonna use my, there we go. Just gonna be quiet, use my keyboard. Uh, but then I can't zoom in. Okay, I do like this one once again. Anytime you have these darker skin tones, it lets you uh, create a lot more reflectivity. Uh, darker skin tones reflect color and light much more, 
which means it's way more fun because you can bring in purples, blues, oranges, just any color, environmental colors. Um, you can have the sky reflected, you can have the surroundings reflected, um, and it just, just makes it way more fun to paint. So keep that in mind. Uh, I added a little witch hat to this guy. He didn't have one, but I felt like he needed one. So now he has a little witch hat. And I think that works out. It's always good to give the characters what they need. And when you look at this guy, you just think, this is like, you know, he's ready to go to little witch academia. So let's just put a little hat on him. Now he's good. I think this one was like a clay bust. And I didn't get, I didn't get chunky enough. I'm going to say that right now. I'm relying a little bit too much on line painting, painting with lines as if it was a colored pencil or something. And we don't want to do that. We want to paint with big chunks. I'm going to say that as often as I have to until it's seeping into your brain. Moving along, I did do a bunch of them as just sketches. Uh, so you can see here, I think I was setting my timer. I did most of these on stream. So I was setting a timer, trying to do them each in five minutes. I think that was the time I said, I don't remember. It's been a long time, but I think these were five minute uh, faces. Could have been three minutes though. All right, I, I really need to pick up the pace a little bit more. Let's see, more faces. Definitely like this bottom row. Uh, a lot of good personality in the, in the mouths and the eyes, using my T-lines, using my subtle line weight stuff. Uh, was really into the chalk brush and drawing with like that chalk brush. I don't know if you can see it in these. But everything, there you go, when you zoom in, it's all done with that chalk. Like, I think it's a pastel in Corel Painter, uh, but it kind of makes it fun to draw with that pastel. Just gives it a little bit more interest. Um, so, good times. More faces, uh, pretty standard, same stuff, gotta zoom by. Oh yeah, I did paint, I tried to make some finished paintings out of some of them, trying to figure out what to emphasize when doing a color study of a face and for this one i was trying to really bring out these colors because if there you can feel that warmness in those mid-tones anywhere in those shadows and crevices it's really getting those warms in there you see that right in those the darkest little crevices bring it in lots of saturation um, it looks a little bit strange and when you try like first try it out and do it you might be like a little hesitant but i assure you it does look a lot better, you know, zoomed out. You can see all that extra saturation thrown in. Um, really focusing on that, trying to saturate those shadows. You never want to make things look muddy by taking those dark, dark values toward like just black. You want to get them nice and saturated. It'll make everything look just kind of lively. Just kind of brings it out, makes it feel very fleshy, uh, very fun. All right, this one. I think his face is a little bit crooked. I tend to always, my brain just shifts everything a little bit. I think I'm starting to see it though more often because this I can definitely see this is slanting to the side just a little bit. There's a little bit of a bias going on in my lines. Uh, but this one, slightly stylizing them. I was trying to stylize some of these and I went through various levels of stylization. You can see this is still using that chalk, that chalk pastel brush. Um, it's kind of fun. And this, this, this is obviously, these are like the three levels of stylization, just realism, eh, stylized realism, and just, you know, going silly with style, uh, focusing big chunks, different colors everywhere. Uh, it's always good to just recolor pick, uh, from the actual, you know, colors to the side, instead of just color picking inside, just pick a new color every time you do a thing. Um, and just let them kind of figure each other out as you go. Makes things pretty fun. I like that one a lot. Good time, very Tanger Hui-ish. Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, this one. Once again, stylized realism. Made the eyes a bit bigger. Uh, typical, sm very mild anime influence on that one. Uh, and of course, the painted version. Trying to focus, ooh, look at those big chunky chunky brush strokes. Good times. All right. So I was, I was pretty happy with how I was painting faces during the start of the year. Um, and that continued on, you know, from even 2018. So feeling good about faces for the most part. Uh, and you know, strawberries too, feeling pretty good about those. 
can't complain. This guy seems pretty happy. Just a quick lighting color practice, I guess. Who knows? Uh, this guy seems to be feeling it too. Once again, getting nice and experimental and chunky. The importance of these pen rim lights uh, can't be denied. This really makes everything just look cool. Uh, and eh, just this typical warm up stuff, practice some bodies. Um, pretty common. This is also typical warm up stuff when I'm trying to actually do designs. A lot of times I just fill a few pages with scribbling nonsense, trying to get a nice feel for all that big, medium, small. And if I'm doing a good job, oftentimes I can look back at this at different times and I'll see things that I think I can pick out of this, this chaos and turn into some fun designs. Some weird frog robot guy over here and some weirder, I don't know, maybe a lizard robot guy over here. These are both their faces. And... Um, more nonsense practice, weird, I don't know, shape hands. I don't even know what to call them, but kind of weird fractions of hands, I guess you could say. This person's elbow has seen better days. I didn't even notice the little dancer in his hand. A little, little private hand dancer. <laughs> it's kind of look like weird insects flying around. Which is good. I like that level of abstraction. Uh, more nonsense. Who knows? I don't know. Experimenting around with different things. Uh, oh yeah, and this was uh, definitely a time period where I realized how fun it is to just make random shapes like I had been doing. And just add like a very structured, simple face to them. And it just looks like the craziest headgear ever. Uh, this was, of course, the paint exploration that I did near the start of the year, which, by the way, I got to do one again this year. I don't want to slack off on paint exploration, uh, so I'll try to do actually a bunch this year, but January 24th is usually the first day I do one, so I'll try to do that one on January 24th. We'll, we'll get in there, mix it up, one layer, 24 hours, see how it goes. Not 24 hours straight, though. That would be ridiculous but over the course of 24 hours, one layer. Uh, so this was little rabbit samurai guy robot, I don't know. Uh, and it came into, well, this was how it ended with this chef. I'm gonna call him the chef. He's having, he's just serving up food. Uh, this was parts where Ahmed, once again, a lot, of, a lot of shout outs to Ahmed in this video, and I think they'll continue. Spent a lot of time with Ahmed this over 2019, obviously with Lightbox and all the different things we did. Uh, there's, there's a lot of collaborations going on here. But he started this one. I kind of took it further, fixed up some of the stuff, added this nonsense. Um, kind of very collaborative little face there. It was fun. Turned out well enough. Uh, then wound up being another, another sci-fi spaceman holding his shapes <laughs> shapes and then that turned into some girls dancing in a river fairies i guess you could say fantasy land with giant flowers that's what i was imagining and of course there was still life fruit man just do some imagination still life fruit and then turn them into a character uh i don't know he's like the king of fruitopia i guess and that turned into an owl. Uh, definitely don't like the value separation going on in this backside, even on the, all the other areas, but that happens in paint exploration. The key is to acknowledge it, to identify it, I guess, first, then acknowledge it. So it's the same thing. And then fix it or take it in a whole new direction. So that was that for paint exploration. Uh, this was a quick photo study of Lauren Tsai that, I don't know, I was just doing it as a warm-up one day. I didn't really like how it was going. It didn't quite have enough angles stylized. I mean, there's some. There's some shapes going on, mostly in the mouth and nose, but the rest of it was getting a little bit too airbrushy looking, and I just lost the shape design. So I wasn't that happy with it, never bothered really finishing it or doing anything with it. Uh, but it was a good warm-up. Uh, and then, of course, was the back video, 
which I quite enjoyed making. Another anatomy quick tips. We did all of that back stuff. Backs, lots of backs. It's very muscular, uh, but the colors are kind of decent. And then of course we had the little animation, flexing back and forth. Always enjoy doing the anatomy quick tips, little animations. Now I can do them on Procreate in the future. Just gotta remember to save everything. Uh, so that's good. I gotta try that out by the way. I haven't actually tried out Procreate animating, but I think it would be pretty good for doing this type of nonsense. So uh, fingers crossed. And this was actually, oh, okay. Forgot about this. This was a quick demo for I think uh, my painting class at LCAD, Laguna College of Art. Uh, I wanted to just quickly explain some nonsense because uh, we were doing uh, reflectivity on spheres and stuff. And uh, the most common mistake people make when doing reflectivity on a sphere is that they'll just reflect basically the things facing them. So it will just reflect, say, in this mock-up, the camera would just be reflecting the blue side of the room. Uh, but it's good to remind people that no, 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 when you're reflecting off a sphere, you're actually going to see, you know, light rays bouncing all the way from the red side and even all the way from the, the back wall. You're getting everything, all of the information on this sphere, a ton of information. Uh, so it winds up looking more like this, um, you know, where everything's kind of sphering back around on itself. And you even see the bar that the metal sphere is on, uh, you can see that going into the ground too. Uh, so just, just fun little demos, painting stuff. Um, it's, always, it's always fun to practice that kind of nonsense. Um, yeah, more sketches. Kind of reminds me of some fight punch Darren Bartley-esque stuff. Mainly, I think it's just this, this head ornament type thing. Um, they also look like k-pop stars or something who knows no it's just the guy in the back this is very k-pop star hair he's definitely in a boy band and oh okay so this is the section of the video where i do have some procreate stuff because when i made my procreate video once again that was around may i did back up everything you know in case i wanted to use it in the video so i do have some stuff I just don't have anything after May, which is most things. Um, but this is all Procreate stuff, typical warm-up faces, robots, uh, just various industrial design shapes, vehicles. Uh, also typical stuff, just doing quick body gestures, faces. Um, these are actual from figure drawing. So most weeks you go to figure drawing, bring my iPad, and just do quick sessions of those. Um, usually try to remember if they were five minute poses or what, it's five minute pose, uh, seven minute poses. Um, yeah, they look okay. It's, it's fine. I try to stylize just a little bit. You can see, maybe you can feel it. I'm trying to find a good flow in the shapes. That's the most important thing. If you can stylize through flow, uh, then you'll be good to go. That, did that rhyme? All right, 10 minutes. And by the way, I normally start to just do worse the longer it gets. Five and seven minutes are usually where I feel the most comfortable. And then once it gets to 10, 15, 20, I usually don't do anything good. Uh, another quick more, I was think I was trying the first time to like figure out how to do paintings on the iPad. So this is very old. But yeah, yeah, just, just trying to figure out what brush to use, all that stuff. This is before I made my own brushes. So I was just trying to see what worked, what did what, more figure drawing. Um, it's good to just block down the body into that, you know, simple rib shape, simple kind of underwear pentagon type shape and just kind of break out the hips and everything and figure it out. Five minute poses. Once again, five and seven minutes tend to be where I'm like, hitting the best stride. Uh, this is uh, all right on that one. Seven minutes, nah, obviously wasn't happy with that one. The back though, it seems like there's some details in the back muscles and stuff. Always a good thing. You can almost make out a trapezius here and there. Uh, 10 minutes, actually these 10 minute ones weren't too bad. Yeah, that's fine. Sometimes they're okay, but yeah. 
bunch more, always switching styles, always switching between stuff. Typical warm-up page, kind of like that guy. Anytime, this, anytime there's a flow to the faces, I feel good about it. More practice, warm-up stuff, skulls with ears and necks. Always a good thing to warm up with. More figure drawing with some added nonsense thrown in. Uh, that's good. I like when I'm figure drawing it also, kind of trying to make it a little weirder, adding some graphic stuff. Uh, it just makes the whole process more fun, means you're in the right state of mind. Uh, okay. Yes. I always have trouble with certain faces. This one is one that I think gave me, always, always struggle with it. But that's, it's fine. Yeah, good old Angelina. I was always, just always messing up the face just a little bit. So I tried to stylize it more and that actually makes it a lot more fun to me. It's not a good likeness though, um, but it is a good drawing. So the difference between something that's a good likeness and something that I think is a good drawing. Now, ideally you get both, but I just wasn't, I couldn't capture it well, so I couldn't get both. So I had to settle for one or the other. Uh, same thing with this one, not a good likeness, but I'm okay with it as a drawing. It doesn't look anything like the person. Uh, I don't know what this is. Some kind of weird creatures. I bet I can re-simplify these shapes and actually turn this into something, but that's uh, something for another day. More figure drawing. Uh, yep, yep, yep. That's most of the stuff in here is figure drawing for that first part of the year. A couple robots, a couple shapes, a couple vehicles, figure drawings. I guess this is a K-pop person. I don't know. It says Young. I didn't write that though. That's obviously not my writing. I think one of my uh, students requested me to uh, do a quick uh, stylized drawing. I don't think they said stylized, but they wanted me to do a drawing of their, I don't know, what what is it called? Their bias? Oh my God. And um, yeah. That, that came out all right. I just kind of stylized it, went for simple shapes, and it was fun. It was, it was fine. They added these hearts. I did not add those. Those are not mine. But they did it on the same layer, so I cannot get rid of them. And it's all gone anyway. Uh, more faces. Typical uh, curved over nose, which I like to do with these silly little nostrils and everything. Good times. This one. Okay. I remember this figure drawn session. This is not mine. By the way, this is a good time to highlight the differences between the way I draw, which apparently is very angular. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh, okay. This is just very harsh. It looks like an industrial design person. A lot of harsh angles. Everything feels very rigid. And uh, this one down here, which was a quick, just like a one minute sketch um, by one of, our students at LCAD. Actually, wait, you guys would probably know my students. It's a uh, Knight or Aruseli on Instagram. It's a great artist. Figure drawn, figure drawn, figure drawn. Once again, if I get if I get a little slowed down in figure drawn, I just like to play with face styles, go from all kinds of stuff. I can flip these around into all kinds of weird faces. Uh, more figure drawing, figure drawing, figure drawing. I like this one. It's a good, good flow to these angles. That's what I'm looking for. And good simplicity on this hand also. Good rhythm going on there. Figure drawing. Actually, a lot of, some of these are pretty good. Uh, I like these ones too. I mean, this feels like a good day. I feel like I was doing some good stuff that day. Oh, well, it looks like that was it. That's all I have for my iPad. It went up to this day, which, you know, once again, that's probably in like May or something. And then that's it. Um, obviously, I would have a ton more stuff, but nope, that's, we're pretty much, the, the second half of this year is gonna be pretty empty. I do have a few scatterings of things that I had done, once again, back in Corel Painter, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna get pretty skimpy from here on out. This is a typical warm up in Corel Painter. I'm really showing you the table scraps here. Uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, yeah, and typical warm up. Just making faces, making bodies. 
Mm -hmm. I think this was a quick lesson on the importance of pelvic tilt. If you want to make a sexy pose, obviously pelvic tilt is an important thing. You can have someone stand up straight or you can have someone tilt their pelvis backward if you want to make like a sexier female, something like that, just a pose that seems more provocative. Um, but obviously you don't want to go back like a U shape. I was given an example what not to do. Don't break their back into a U shape. Still needs to follow a basic flow that's comfortable. So a reasonable amount of pelvic tilt is all you need. Um, tends to just kind of make the hips feel a little bit widened out, uh, separates the ribs from the hip area a little bit more. Uh, just, just works for poses. Keep it in mind, you know, when you see it from the side and everything. Uh, I don't know what this is. Maybe uh, just making up a random Pokemon. Uh, I don't like these. These horns have terrible shape design. What is wrong with me? They're just blobs on top of blobs and they have no shape to them. Oh well. It's like a dragon deer though. Everyone loves dragon deer. Uh, another potato man. Uh, this is like typical demos of how to make creatures. <laughs> oh, okay. This was a quick impromptu little art battle I did with Ahmed while watching the Limits art battle uh, 2019 finals, which, by the way, Anthony Jones won. He is the champion of the world. Ahmed won it the year before. They are the two reigning champions and they're both from america despite there only being a few american contenders each year it's held in japan um but yeah anthony jo anthony jones robot pencil won this year it was very exciting by the way if you guys have never watched that it usually happens near the start of the summer we stay up all night because it happens like at at past midnight because it's daytime in japan uh, but we watch it live and we have a lot of fun and we get hyped for some some digital art battles. I'm not good at them. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is uh, this is a little. I don't remember what. This is. No, this was when I was uh, hanging out with T B Choi. No, we were doing a little Google Hangout, and we were both working on art stuff. And I was telling her about paint exploration and showing her all about paint explorating nonsense and how to make weird stuff. I think this kept flipping backwards. I think it was some kind of silly beefy boy. Uh, you know, it makes more sense from this angle, actually. No, but it kept changing, and it's just nonsense. But then it turned into that this was some TB Choi monster that was eating men alive. Um, so who knows? Good times. More face warm-up. Uh, okay, this is fine. No problems there. Uh, more face warm-ups. Most of these are probably going to be face warm-ups. But once again, there's a focus on trying to find the planes of the face and make a, an interesting flow. Always very important. Flow. You got to get in the right headspace. Make everything just kind of have a have a flow to it. So if it, whether it's the eyes, the way they interact with the nose, or whether it's the way the jowls and cheek interact with the head, just want to have kind of some kind of dynamic going on between all of those different facial features makes it more fun if you can get that working for you all right more faces more faces my faces are getting very standard at this point i think we've seen you've seen one you've seen them all uh definitely some shape design practice here butterflies always a good way to warm up uh-huh 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 more stuff more stuff nothing too surprising here oh and this was around the time where i had done the of course painting shadows better video is i don't remember what the name was how to paint better shadows uh, and of course the main theme of that video was on trying to detail less in the shadows uh, so i made it like a face and then i blocked off one side and just lowered the contrast a bunch um, so there's a lot less detail and contrast going on in the shadows which is very important just let your shadows remember there's no detail in your shadows a lot less there's no light transmitting information. So you gotta like, you know, leave a little bit less detail and information in the shadows. I don't know what this is, but it looks terrible. I don't know, this yellow color. I think I was just trying out some random brushes or something. Who knows? This guy looks like, uh, he's got 
a head like a steamroller. Uh, it's, it's a great character, steamroller head. More map crunch practice closer to the end of the year. Uh, just, just warming up some map crunch. A lot of very dull environments on map crunch. Uh, that's pretty typical. Some creaturey nonsense. A little robot just hitting all the bases. Environment, creature, and uh, industrial. Oh, and then this was around the time where I did my self-portrait video, which I enjoyed. It was definitely kind of rushed and forced, the actual painting. I, I had a rough end of the year, to be honest. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more about that, just go watch the video. Uh, luckily, I'm, I'm feeling better now. Things are definitely going a lot smoother. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, like, one last thing I opened up Corel Painter for was to just do... I was planning on doing a whole series of faces um, and trying to make them out of different textures, such as wood and stone. And I didn't get around to it because I still wasn't feeling great. But eventually, I do like that idea, so I'll probably get back to it. These were some quick warm-ups of how I thought... Uh, just practicing quickly painting some like wooden textures on spheres and things and shapes uh, And the the result was this one. I did one of them. I did one face made out of wood I had fun with it for sure it this one definitely took longer than I wanted it to uh, But it was definitely a fun experiment. I like some of these some of those subtle details came out pretty well uh, Anytime you're trying to do them by hand. It's always a bit of a risk um, but, you know, adding just those nodding curves um, anywhere you can, having a couple chips here and there, uh, it kind of looks nice, kind of makes it pretty fun. Uh, so that, that was good. I want to do more of them. I'll get to them eventually. Uh, and this, this was just a demo for, these are old, by the way. You've seen these robots before. They're nothing new. Uh, but what is new was I was doing a quick demo for one of my classes and I thought it would be a good exercise for them to take uh, industrial designs they had done and try to make like a loop box. A loop box. Uh, so this was my example. This is supposed to be a loop box based on this guy. This is supposed to be a loop box based on that guy. It's a good mental exercise. I recommend you try it out if you want to be an industrial design person. You can have that one free. Take that exercise, roll it up in a ball, and keep it with you. You're good to go. Make a loop box for every every design you do. That'd probably look good in a portfolio. If I was an art director and someone was like, check it out, I made this cool robot design. Oh yeah, and here's what a loot box would look like in that style. I'd be like, okay, this person understands cohesiveness and how to design stuff. So it's a good, it's a good little challenge. We got anything else? Oh, I just, luckily I at least have my thumbnail from the Procreate video, but I don't even have the original artwork anymore. That's lost to the ages as well. Well, that's fine. This is, this is good enough. Luckily, I do have some things on Instagram, so I guess we can look at it. my ins. That's so lame. 2019 review. Let's all look at my Instagram. Sadly, this is like a very small, small, small example of the stuff I did. Um, so, boo. Boo. I had a ton of creatures and industrial stuff, but um, yeah, look at that. I like this one. Too bad I lost it because that was a fun drawing. I kind of like the flow of some of those things. Uh, but that's just figure drawing. I am sad about this one though because I did like this drawing. Obviously, I can just save it from here. But I know that I had a bunch of other like mech little doodles along with it. Um, so I lost those. So I'm kind of bummed about that one. Uh, but that, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I won't cry. No, it's it's really fine. I can make the designs. I'll just make them again and just do my best. Uh, but I went through a little little session uh, where I was just doing tons of creature designs, having fun with them, uh, just kind of winging them, just without any real plan, just making random blobs, seeing how they went, just getting comfortable with Procreate, trying different styles. Uh, I didn't really like that one that much. This one, I like. This one, not so much. This one has issues too. Uh, it, it it almost almost worked. Uh, the chicken was fun. Chicken owl. It started off. I was like, oh, I'll make a weird owl. And I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. Let's just make a chicken instead. So it kind of has that weird owl chicken hybrid <laughs> mixture. 
And see, this guy just started off as, I don't know, Furby creature. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I plan to do a video on like some different methods for creature design sometime because there's a lot of simple ways to go about creature design that you probably haven't thought of before. Anyway, this guy, they wrote a lot of variations on this one. I went with the, like the most boring one because I gave up on the face part. It just looks like a weird Evangelion. This was, by the way, around the time Evangelion came out on Netflix. I actually own the box set, like, so I watched it so many times, but I rewatched it yet again when it came out on Netflix. That's good times. Uh, what else we got? Lightbox promo. Yeah, why not? Lightbox was a great time. Ooh, little guy there. Did this one with uh, my little protege, Jen. Uh, yeah, we just collaborate. We were just passing the iPad back and forth and making some dumb doodles and stuff like that. Always fun to pass ideas or, you know, pass an actual physical thing back and forth, like a sketchbook or an iPad. And you just take turns adding to things and taking things and making them weirder. Uh, this one was okay. It's, I don't know where it was going, but I had this just idea for a snake-like creature that had just like a rows of teeth. It kind of looks like a jaw. That's which is why I made these ear things, these horn. I don't know what they are. These flap things. I made them like long off the head because I want this part to look like a lower jaw and with uh, like teeth and everything. And then the teeth go all the way back along the whole thing, you know, like the backside of the whole snake. And then I imagine it just like eating or grinding up food by wrapping around it, you know, constricting around it and just kind of getting ground up in the teeth. Doesn't that a great idea? I call them a molar snake, I think. Is that what I said over here? Yeah, molar snake. It has teeth along its back. I was having fun with that one. Uh, it's always good if you can give your designs a little bit of a story. This guy's just delightful. I don't know, I just like this expression when I doodled him. He's just another potato creature, but uh, just a little wispy hairs and the, the kind of doe-eyed expression just makes me happy. I just, I don't know why, it's a good time. Uh, so this is just more typical iPad stuff, some figure drawing. Luckily I uploaded some stuff, um, some some beefy guy. That guy's extra beefy, look at it. Look at how small his head is, it's so beefy. Um, it's with his robot friend, what else we got in here? I like these faces, trying to get those flows working. Yep, more figure drawn, a little bit of stylization. Yep, same thing here. Mm, that one's a pretty good one. I like that. I like some of the confidence and some of those line shapes on the back. Uh, what else we got? More figure drawn. Well, this is probably stylized. I don't know if this is from imagination or based on the model. I can't really tell. Could be either. I think it's definitely got a little bit of imagination stuff going in. I don't think the model looked quite like in like a weird drawing of a person. Um, but these were fun. Um, probably did like some imagination drawing during figure drawing, which is, you know, always good. Uh, more anatomy stuff. Yep. Uh, different levels of stylization. Add figure drawing once again. Ah, uh, that's the end. Oh, well. Too bad. That's That's all we have. That's all I have left. Right? It's all empty from there. You see, I saw these. Regardless, uh, there's a couple quick things that I can mention to close out the 2019 video. And I'm gonna do a couple fun things in this video. And I'm wasting a bunch of time and I'm making this video long, so I'm sorry. But the first thing I want to mention is that uh, I am doing, yet again, I will be teaching Concept Art Bootcamp at Brainstorm Inland. So if you live, by the way, this is like an in-person class, not an online thing, but if you live near the Inland Empire in Southern California, uh, you can consider signing up to that. I don't know uh, when I'll do the next one, if it'll be uh, in summer or not, but regardless, uh, you still have some time to sign up if you're interested. There's a lot of good classes there, by the way. There's Character Design Bootcamp with Marshall Vandruff and Vance Kovacs. That's that's probably going to be a, a killer class. I kind of wish I was in that class. Um, but Concept Art Bootcamp is a fun time as well. We have, we have a good time in there. Uh, so if you're interested in taking classes, Southern California, 
brainstorm's a good place to do it. But the last thing I want to get into, because I needed some kind of bonus content to make up for the loss of all of my iPad stuff, so I actually prepared something fun. So at LCAD, my main teaching spot, every term I teach the concept sketchbook class. And uh, lately I've developed it to a point where we always pick some random words and we try to develop a world based on those words. Obviously most of the work is done by the students and I would share some student work, but I didn't ask permission. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but instead I'll give you like quick recaps just for fun because I think a lot of these worlds are kind of unique and interesting. The first world is from spring 2019. Basically, we have this lovely desert world. It's a desert planet. Those are fun. The theme words that helped us get to this world were feudal Asia, or was it Japan? I don't know, feudal Asian and desert. So I took those words, I played art director, and I decided that we would have basically two main areas we'd focus on. There's uh, what I called the Cacti tribe, which is basically just a nomadic tribe that lives out in the middle of the desert. Um, and they, let's see, oh uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, basically they use like paint on their faces, heavy like zinc mud and stuff to protect themselves from the sun. And their hair is kind of like very, has a lot of spiky, you know, things very dried out, um, kind of resembles, you know, cactus. That's the joke is cacti, cactus, you know. But anyway, they have like textiles and stuff and they have their tribal kind of people. And yeah, this one's named after me. And yeah, the panda camel was a joke. We were thinking of fun animals that could exist in this desert Asian feudal world. Uh, so there's the cacti tribe. They live out in the desert. Maybe that's our protagonist. Um, he's like the young, the young brash one of the tribe. And he wants to go out and do his own thing and get into trouble and adventure. This guy's maybe like the leader of the tribe. But yeah, they wander around the desert as you can see. Uh, and the idea for the desert stuff to make it more interesting than just a desert um, was that the creatures there are all based on fish, which, you know, once again, I, we thought that was a little bit Asian because uh, a lot of, you know, feudal Asian stuff, there's a lot of, a lot of fishing stuff and, you know, whatnot. So we thought it'd be fun if there was like giant manta rays that just like roam the sky and other gliding fish-like creatures that were actually really deadly. Uh, which is why we have these little like balloon type things that people carry, the tribal people carry out here because they're, you know, they got spikes on them and even just the, the color and everything, it's enough to scare away flying things. There's like lines connected, you know, if you're a flying creature, you don't want to try to swoop in on a bunch of spikes and things. Uh, so they're just a little bit of extra protection for all these wandering cacti tribe people. So for instance, you can imagine some wanderer wandering out from the city into the, the desert and then all of a sudden, just a giant sand manta comes up out of the sand. Oh no, look at that, how dangerous. Luckily it didn't, you. hold on, we need a shadow. There we go, oh no. Um, yeah, obviously I was just like yesterday, I was making silly little photo bash nonsense. Uh, just to share the world with you and not have it be boring and give you something to look at. Oh no, it's a sand manta. Watch out. It's gonna eat you or something. Um, so I'm, I'm stupid. We also had the great idea of there being, you know, like the equivalent of puffer fish. So I was thinking of some kind of green lizard looking thing, spiky lizard. It kind of just crawls around and then it, it hides in cactus. And then it puffs up, you know, like <laughs> I'm obviously very lazy with my photo bash. It puffs up and then uh, it, it tries to get creatures or things that are looking for water in the cactus uh, to prick themselves and get poisoned by its toxic little porcupine barbs there. Um, and then that's how it kills creatures. And then it, you know, goes back into its lizard form and, you know, eats, eats things. I don't know. Seems like a fun creature. It's a good way to bring in a s more sea life creatures into this desert environment. So we got our, got our puffer fish. It's fun, right? That's the cacti tribe. Now there's more to the world than this. There's the cacti tribe in the desert, but there's also the city, the city of dun, 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 Condensia. 
And this is, once again, a quick photo bash. Um, but basically, it's a giant condenser and they use, it goes deep underground and it uses the, the temperature differences of the hot sun and the cold underground uh, to condense the air and to make water. So this is like one of the few places that is thriving because they have water and water is the most precious thing on the desert world. Um, obviously, there's probably some, you know, natural water, obviously there, or there wouldn't be any water in the air. But, you know, don't worry too much about it. It's de mostly desert world. Uh, we got this giant Condensia city and obviously Asian themed, feudal Asian themed. Uh, a lot of the, the people were probably going to have more of an Asian kind of aesthetic to their clothes and everything. Um, but this land is very affluent. They have all the money. They even are fancy enough to grow trees, which is considered quite a luxury to have. And of course, there's going to be some conflict between these rich have-it-alls and the poor desert people. The idea was that the princess of Condensia would, for some reason, be forced to go out into the desert where she would stumble upon our our main character and they would become, for, you know, I don't know. It's just a typical nonsense story. No one cares, uh, but that's... That's our fun little world that we built in the spring of 2019. And uh, those of you that are very observant might remember that I actually did a desert samurai kind of theme um, in my conceptual contrast video, just by random chance. Uh, they, they selected this one, you know, just by a random generator. Um, but I had done some ideas of like a desert uh, feudal setting also so you can just imagine that the the warriors from condensia kind of look like this person with their nice fancy fabrics and textiles obviously they needed a lot of sun protection and then they go out into the desert and uh get eaten by giant sand mantas okay that's enough of that so that was what we did during the spring term. And then of course, during the fall term, new class, new term, uh, new world to build. So Ahmed was with me during the first week of this class. So he was there when we picked the words and the words we got were kind of tricky because they were uh, decrepit and poison, which kind of sound very similar. But the best way we thought to put a spin on those words was to make the poison actually be like the good thing. And that way we can have, you know, that contrast of having something good, something bad. That lets you have a more diverse world and a little bit more story uh, in there. So with Ahmed in the class, he thought of this brilliant idea of, um, I don't know if you guys can see that well, um, but it's basically this sci-fi looking farmer guy. And my job on the alien planet is to plant poisonous plants to keep the decrepit away. Uh, he made the decrepit like a little evil looking fairy thing. Um, but the overall idea I thought was a lot of fun. Um, so our class kind of took, you know, elements of that. Well, I'll just go through the whole story with you guys. So let me set the world for you. Imagine the deep, distant, dark future. Uh, space travel is very common. Let's, it's like 30,000 years from now. Who knows how long? Uh, we have this spaceship traveling through space. It's like an ark. It just houses hundreds of people. They're traveling to find new planets and to live in new places in the unknown expanse of space kind of a chubby ship. I imagine it being very wide. Anyway, uh, it's, it's not the best design. I just made this real quickly as an example, but that wasn't really part of everything. Anyway, uh, they ran into, oh no, it's an evil gangly space symbiote creature. Oh, that's, that's scary. Anyway, uh, this thing infected their ship and became attached to it and started uh, corrupting everything. We're just going to call this the decrepit from now on. So this decrepit force came on the ship and started infecting everything. And uh, the ship had to crash land into this forest planet. Um, and basically, the story here takes place 168 years later at the crashed wreckage of this spaceship. Um, so that's a nice world where it's very natural. You have, you know, forest, you have nature. Uh, but you can also include just just a little bit of their carried over technology. Now, this point, 168 years later, 
Um, they're probably kind of running thin on their old, you know, technology. They probably couldn't keep it up to snuff, but they still have some mech stuff. They still got some vehicle stuff. They still have some space uh, gear. They live in the remnants of their crashed hull of their spaceship. Um, and they've kind of adapted and also built up things from the nature as well. So you get that kind of that mix back and forth between stuff that's very nature-based and stuff that's very technology-based. And that's a fun way to do things. Anyway, um, they realized, you know, along the pathway that the only way to survive was to plant these mushrooms that they found there, that they found were the one thing that kept the decrepit away. They're poisonous mushrooms, and they just kind of put up a poisonous cloud uh, of of gases that comes out of the mushroom and the decrepit hate it and they can't get through it. Most of this be once beautiful planet is just covered in the rotting decrepit creatures and it's just t basically turned the rest of the world to black tar and weird creatures. Everything's corrupted. Uh, very, very Ghibli-esque. Um, but then the town here is still exists. It's like a little village in the forest they surrounded themselves with these poisonous mushrooms, so they have to live in poison. Um, but so they all have like spacesuit helmets on and things in their daily lives. Um, and they've had to adapt some of nature stuff, so they do a lot of farming. The kids there who obviously don't have spacesuits because they're running, they don't really have working stuff anymore. They've started to adapt like some mushroom organic stuff to use to filter out all the, the harmful chemicals and to let the little kids run around. So this kid's got a little mushroom suit on. Uh, this guy's got the space suit, but it's enhanced with some, you know, you know, little leaves and, you know, twigs and kind of pieced together through nature stuff as well. He got some cloaked figures and blah, blah, blah. They still got some stuff, but not everything. Anyway, uh, my idea was that the, the decrepit kind of look like weird creature things. And uh, yeah, there's some kind of storyline where uh, this guy has to go out, protagonist, maybe with his little sibling, into the decrepit land, uh, which is very dangerous to go recover something, to go look for another piece of the spaceship that had been thought to be lost and recover some, I don't know, something useful for their survival. Maybe the little mushroom kid is sick and they need medicine and they know that it's out in a piece of the wrecked ship that's in the decrepit land. Uh, so that's a good story, right? I can write stories. Uh, so he has to go out, fight some monsters, uh, save the family, save the save the world, etc. Uh, one idea that I liked a lot was the thought of them having like the old thrusters, the jets on the back of the spaceship. They repurpose them like flat on the ground and use them for like, growing uh, food and stuff, like a little rice paddy inside the the nice round uh, back of the spaceship. Uh, they got all these, you know, spaceship parts. They're kind of rusted out because they're very old. You know, they've been around for almost two centuries now. So everything's kind of old and rusty, uh, but they use that stuff for their farming and whatnot, obviously. So that was the, the fall term and they made a lot of good fun stuff as well. Uh, so that's that's my LCAD class. It's a lot of good times. In future recap videos, I'll probably keep sharing um, what we do in that class because I like these worlds. But in the meantime, I think that's about it. I've rambled on long enough. I've wasted a bunch of time, but hopefully you got inspired. Hopefully you saw some fun stuff that made you think of your own ideas that you want to try out. It was a rough year, had a lot of setbacks. Obviously, I lost most of the art, but it was good and it, it was an amazing time and I really enjoyed meeting all the people I met in 2019. So I'm looking forward to a good 2020, hopefully a more productive 2020. Not many videos last year, uh, but we'll, we'll get back to it. It'll happen, don't worry. Um, anyway, I want to give one last big thank you to everyone on Patreon who still supports me, which is greatly appreciated even though the channel's hasn't had enough content lately. I really appreciate that support. And don't worry, more stuff is coming. I'm I'm working on it. I got a lot of good stuff that I have planned for 2020. Um, you know, I, it's, I'm excited to share some of the stuff because there's a lot of interesting things, but I'll get to them and uh, it, sh it should be a good year. I'm looking forward to it. 
so thank you all for watching. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope you all have a great new year. Have a great 2020. Do some great art. Looking forward to your projects and everything.